Right now, Florida scientists are breathing a sigh of relief after their first aerial assessment of the southern Florida's ecosystems since Hurricane Ian. Why? So they found that most of the state's mangrove forests were largely unharmed by Ian. Florida's mangroves are crucial because they're able to pull large amounts of carbon out of the atmosphere, in addition to being a first line of defense to strong storms. So before Ian, our team traveled down to Florida's Rookery Bay to find out how the mangroves are being restored and how they're being protected. But we also went back after Ian to see how they managed to weather the storm. Maura Barrett has the story. Hurricane Ian, with its 150 mile per hour winds, ripping through Florida, killing more than 100 people in the state and endangering wildlife on the coastline including 600,000 acres of mangroves, vital trees that grow along the coast where the tide comes in. Their dense tangle of exposed roots stabilize the coastline. What we tend to think of is mangrove forests as, as being this beating heart. So as the tides come in and out, that's very much like the arteries carrying blood in and out of the heart. Providing a buffer from extreme storms. They're kind of the shock absorbers and giant sponges that can absorb that water and the shocks of wave energy and other things. The mangroves remove carbon from the atmosphere, which is key in fighting climate change. While mangroves cover less than 1% of tropical forests, worldwide, each year they remove more than 24 million metric tons of carbon from the atmosphere. Hurricane Irma in 2017 demolished 40 percent of the Everglades mangroves. Stagnant flood water cut off their oxygen supply, killing off entire forests. But the wetlands and its mangrove forests actually fared well during Hurricane Ian. And it appears the storm helped clear out persistent algae that was impacting tree growth on the southern tip of Florida, according to the Miami Herald. More than 100 miles northwest, areas near the eye of Hurricane Ian produced preliminary storm surge of more than 15 feet, causing extensive and and costly damage. Meanwhile, just next door, Rookery Bay saw similar levels of storm surge. The mangroves protecting the coast, though, softened the blow. This footage, taken right after Hurricane Ian in Rookery Bay, shows a live example of why the Florida Department of Environmental Protection is working to keep these mangroves healthy as a first line of defense against strong storms and to fight climate change. When we talk about healthy mangroves, this is exactly what we're talking about. This is a very healthy mangrove ecosystem. A week before Ian hit, our team traveled to Rookery Bay to see that restoration firsthand. We restore a mangrove or wetland. Those can, in theory at least, restore carbon back to the land and sequester it, kind of put it away and lock it up away from the atmosphere and put it into nature. If you have a weak system, a stress system, a non-healthy system, it is not going to be able to withstand those large impacts from storms such as hurricanes. And with experts saying climate change is contributing to more intense hurricanes, mangroves are proving to be a key investment to keep that heart beating. This isn't just about protecting nature for its own sake, the pretty trees and the birds. It's about us. It's about having more resilient and more secure kind of coastlines where a lot of people live in a world that's increasingly dangerous thanks to climate change. All right, and Maura is joining us now. So we know now, more how important these mangroves actually are. What is the plan when it comes to more investment supporting these mangroves going forward? Well, Yasmin, as coastal risks continue to rise, the Florida Department of Environment's new coastal restoration team is ready to fund even more of these types of projects, investing over $600 million, $640 million already. And in turn, projects that restore mangroves are proven to prevent tens of thousands of dollars in damages during each of these storms. That's according to the Nature Conservancy. Now, we're talking about a very strong Category 4 hurricane, so anything to soften the effects of that can go a long way. The natural habitats will heal on their own and be ready for the next major storm. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.